intersectional. Our fight is intergenerational. Our fight is international. When we're united for black lives, we know how important that is. When we look at the oppressive government, let's not even go to the Swells report that says we have racial harmony. We need to start calling out this corrupt government that constantly disappoints, constantly tries to take our voice. They try to silence us on a daily basis. But when we come together, when we stand and put our fist up, fist up! my ancestors I ground myself to this earth and I tell you we will not be silenced no matter what when the people realize who they are they definitely always stand stronger when they try to take what we are we tell them we're not going nowhere when they tell us that we're aggravated terrorists we we'll tell them fuck you be honest to you I did not give this government consent to fuck me so then I tell them to go fuck themselves what? 18 months it has been, we have endured so much. The political class in Westminster have failed us. They inoculate themselves against the pain that we suffer. We will not forgive them. And no, we will not be patient against their political ideology, a belief system which sees exploitation, grotesque levels of inequality, the constant threat of war and destitution as a fair price for the protection of a system which serves them so well and the richest so well. We have run out of patience with their system and with the destruction that they wrought. They willfully look away at the housing crisis, at poverty pay. They have encouraged a system of privatisation and fragmentation of our NHS, taking away more and more of our services. They stoke a despicable nationalistic racism and wars to distract us, to divide, divert our attention and obscure the truth. The truth is, they refuse to serve our interests and they have disdain for our lives. They are shameful and Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock, Brittany Patel, the lot of them have to be forced out of power by a movement. And I have a message for the leader of the opposition. You have to start opposing this you need to take our pain, our grief, take the last decade of austerity and all of the destruction that has caused, take the injustice done to the Windrush generation and the people of Grenfell Tower and all of those people who have been sanctioned by the DWP, take the dedication and service of an intensive care nurse and tell You are the opposition to the Tory government. At the root of our communities is a deep, deep love for one another. We are not the enemies of each other and we will not treat each other as such. We are on a collective journey of discovery, trying to make sense of living in this scary world. Let's be gentle with each other. And to those people who are at home, who have not yet made it to the streets, tell them now, you There can be a world where our seas, our forests and the air that we breathe is cleansed of the destruction caused by the unfettered greed of a few. And who will deliver that? We will deliver that. Never give up. Thank you. Occupy of Downing Street. He's the rightful owner of number 10. He has been our leader. He's still the leader of millions. such 
a range of organizations and communities and interests in this square here today. People representing the hope of a world of peace, not war, of a world free of nuclear weapons, not threatened by nuclear weapons. I'm here proud to stand alongside teachers and educational campaigners who bring hope to our children through their skills and are campaigning for proper payments to our schools to help children recover from corona and the way in which they've lost so many educational opportunities. I'm proud to be here alongside health campaigners for all that they do and all that they've done and all that they will do. And I'm also very proud to be here alongside so many people who understand with passion the whole issue of environmental sustainability. I am fearful that uh, COP26 in Glasgow later this year will become an exercise in greenwash, self-aggrandizement before they get into private jets to head off home. The reality is the poorest people in the poorest countries suffer the worst air quality the worst quality food, the shortest life expectancies and the danger of flooding, pandemics and of course so-called natural disasters. We have to be serious about campaigning for environmental justice all over the world as well as in this country. Our health service was founded by people with vision. Vision of health care free at the point of use as a human right. The current Secretary of State for Health is only interested in handing out contracts to Serco or other companies, privatising our NHS and our Prime Minister said to me in December 2019 I was scaremongering when I said American companies would come in and take over our NHS. Well, if I was scaremongering, how come Centene now run a GP practice in my own constituency? I say, get the contractors out of the NHS! Pay the NHS staff the 15% increase they need and deserve. But we, we as a movement, are not just about defending the gains that our predecessors made in health, in education, in housing and in so many other areas. We're about taking things further forward. A world of peace, a world of justice. And there's a great injustice that happens when you get older. And all of us one day are going to get older. Probably half the people in this square at some point in their lives are going to need social care. I say this to those that are thinking of social care policies make social care the equivalent of our NHS and provide it free at the point of need for everybody. If as a country we can afford to create more billionaires during a crisis than have ever been created before, we can afford to tax those billionaires to fund the services that we need for the future. And that is what justice is about is what justice looks like. And here today, all of us, in all our diversity, are a real strength. We will never allow the Islamophobes, the anti-Semites, the racists, or anybody else to divide us. We are united as a people demanding a fair and just world, demanding a world fit for the next generation, for our children to grow up in. Now, political power from lots of places. Yes, of course, there is political power that comes from elected offices. That is absolutely obvious. But those that set out on the road to free education, housing, health care, set out in the southern states of the USA on the road to try and achieve democracy, set out in the colonies of the 19th century to achieve independence, or in the 18th to abolish slavery, didn't hold political office. All they held was the ability to unite each other together in a common cause. It is up to us. Stay together, be together, be strong and active together, and that will give hope to our generation, the next generation.
generation and the generations after that. Stay strong, stay solid. Thank you.
fantastic. I think only one guy got grabbed. I didn't see the full circumstances of it. Um, I can't really speak as to that. Yeah, everything's been really fun. The route's not been too long. Like, I think the last big march where it went in all the way down, up and down past Westfields was maybe a little bit too long. The only thing that's going to be interesting is whether this can transfer to the weekdays when the MPs are in Parliament. Because if the MPs are in Parliament, it's going to inconvenience them. And just like the Great Stink, right, where they're literally, the Thames was so full of shit and it was so hot that even the parliamentarians, even though they drenched all their curtains in lime, still had to smell the shit. When they got inconvenienced, then London got its sewer system. So too, I think that eventually when the people bring this on the weekdays with the Monday protests and maybe even rolling out through the week, that that will be the point at which you might start to see some significant change. The whole point of the courts is that the courts are independent of the government. And you've got the police who say, oh, well, you know, we have to, uh, we, we are impartial, we just enforce the law. And I'm like, how do you enforce the law? According to the government's uh, interpretation. Well, that's not independent, is it? Basic fucking logic. No. She's an absolute fucking disgrace. Every single unconstitutional ultra vires act has her signature on. She is the most complicit person in this country. She is meant to be a check and balance. She has the powers to say no. She has the powers to dismiss the government and call a general election. She doesn't do it. She doesn't care. She doesn't give a toss. She cares about preserving this facade of a monarchy. The point of a monarchy is to actually protect the people. Okay? They have a job to uphold our constitution. And she is, everyone says, oh, she has no power. No! She just can't be fucked to use it. She's a fucking traitor. We always grow, and that's the reason why that the state, the establishment, we're going to call them, they fear us the most because we are now bigger. We're the most biggest movement in the entire UK. We're bigger than Black Lives Matter. We're bigger than Extinction Rebellion. We're bigger than the feminist movement, Israel, Palestine. All of those things are simply divide movement. Those five things are used to divide people, and we're seeing through that, and that's why the state fear us the most and our police are more harsh them. I mean, you see Extinction Rebellion, they turn up with hammers smashing um, windows, and the police and the mainstream media accommodate them. Whereas us, where's the mainstream media? They don't want the sleeping person at home still caring about materialistic sort of bollocks that no one cares about really in the greater scheme of things. They're trying to trick them and go, oh, only a hundred people turned up. You know what I mean? Or only a thousand people turned up. They don't want to know. They fear us the most. And that's how you know that we're winning. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I can't really say well. I would say simply go into more residential areas rather than the same old areas in central London like um, Oxford Street, you know, Downing Street, Whitehall, all of these places. No one actually lived in those places. City of London, only 5,000 people live in City of London and most of those people are usually top sort of elitist sort of people. So you're not really going to change anything. Go into places like Brixton, Peckham, um, you know, where people actually live. Go to those areas rather than the same old places. I mean, it's always a good laugh going through Oxford, Oxford Street and Oxford Circus or whatever, getting a few shoppers, but you're only converting about a thousand people max. You need to go into the residential areas like last time we passed by Shepherd's Bush and get people waking up that way. And then you see, wow, these guys are actually fun. They've got all this music, they've got all this, they're actually a good laugh. Wow, you know, they're not crazy people. And actually waking people that way. Trust me, people are bored nowadays. They want to see new things. So definitely go into residential areas rather than going into the same old sort of crappy areas that no one really lives in or it's full of elite this sort of sort of like tops where they're pretty much like in hand in hand doing this sort of stuff, this authoritarian measures in the first place.